Join me for part two of learning how to make faux leather earrings using your Silhouette Cameo. Now, after we have cut out our faux leather and our glitter canvas for our earrings, I am going to show you how to assemble your earring pieces. Okay, so before we begin assembling our earrings, I want to show you the faux leather from Hobby Lobby. It comes in rolls like this, as I had showed you on the picture. And as I said before, you can find it in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby. And like the back of the brown is just a brown color. I do not double up on these. I don't put anything on the back of them. I don't think it's a bad look on the back. Some choose to use HTV or 651 on the back. That is totally up to you. Now, on the brown faux leather, as you saying it was brown, this is the blush, what they call the blush color, and it is white. And I don't think with the, you know, if it was to turn around, I don't think that's an awful color to, you know, the white up against the blush. That's not an awful color if somebody were to see it. So that is, that's totally going to be up to you what you want to do with the back of them. So these are the two glitter canvases that they offer at Hobby Lobby. And then the um, faux leather comes in several just different colors. I just picked up a few different colors, you know, just to try out and what worked for me. And as I stated before, you can look on Etsy and um, look up, you know, faux leather. Um, there's a couple places that sell um, real leather. And you can just, you know, you can get some good prices on sheets of leather. Just look around and find the best, the best price for what you're wanting. There's different designs patterns that's totally up to you okay so here are the cut pieces I just have one of the faux leather cut out because um, I have the other one already assembled so I'm going to show you on that on the glitter canvas I take the shape and I cut out four of the same shape once they're cut out I take my hot glue gun and I put a thin layer on the back of one of the shapes I take the other shape to the other one. I smooth it out with my finger. If there's any excess that comes out of the sides, I just either wipe it or I will trim it with the scissors and make sure that it's smooth. I do not cut the canvas because it will, you know, adjust the size. Only trim where the hot glue would have seeped out. Um, it does not affect it. It does not, you know, mess with the shape or anything. It just makes it more sturdy so that it's not just a thin flapping piece of canvas and it's not hard to punch a hole in it after they've been you know hot glue been put in between it um it just makes them more sturdy and more appealing if they were to turn around while you were wearing it anyhow um <clears throat> so what you'll need is you'll need your earring pieces you will need if you choose to use um fish hook ear wire that's what they call them and you will need jump rings. Some people don't use jump rings, and that is fine. At Hobby Lobby, they have the split rings. Uh, these are the Jewelry Shop brand. They have the split rings in different sizes, and they have the uh, fish hook ear wire in different sizes, different colors. You can get the silver, which is this here. You can get the... Um, the darker silver along with the jump rings you have different sizes these are the circle jump rings and then what I'll be using for the jump rings for the glitter canvas earrings here are oval they're called five by seven oval jump rings and they're the jewelry shop brand as well um, Hobby Lobby about every other week or so has jewelry shop brand on sale for 50% off about every other week or so. So it was about $1.50 a pack for these and you get several um, several pieces in each pack. Okay, so 
Another thing that I had mentioned are jewelry pliers. If you don't have jewelry pliers, don't go out and buy any. If your husband has some needle nose pliers in his tools, go and use those. They will work just fine. Don't go spend any money if you don't have to. I have these couple of pairs. I use both of them to hold on to the jump ring to open it and then close it, push it together to make sure that it's secure. That's just what I do. Okay, another thing that you will need is a punch. I had mentioned a hole punch. I'd seen where some people had mentioned getting a leather punch and using your 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. If you want to do that, that is fine. Leather punch works great. Something else that is inexpensive to use, I did not use a 30% or 40% off coupon. Um, I just got over in the paper section at Hobby Lobby. The Paper Studio Hole Punch. And I don't know if you can see it, but it just punches a small dot. The measurement says 0 0.06 inch dot. It will go through the glitter canvas, a single, uh, single sheet, or doubled with the hot glue. It will go through your faux leather. It is $3.99 at Hobby Lobby. It works perfectly. I punch my holes with this. Have not had a problem. Works great. I'm just showing you what I use and what works. And it's very inexpensive. So anyhow, um, if you have a ultra fine tip Sharpie, or you could use an ink pen, go ahead and get that out. We're gonna go ahead and punch our holes for our glitter canvas earrings. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my earring. We'll try to do it sideways so that you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and line it up. You don't want it too close to the edge, to the top edge of the earring, because if you do that, that is where your earring piece is going to come out if you pull on it with any kind of pressure. So you want to make sure that it's far enough down that you have a good distance away from the top, but you don't want it too far down that you're not going to be able to put your pieces in without adding two or three jump rings to it. So I'm going to find that placement. When I hold, what I do is I hold it up straight looking at me or towards me to make sure that it is straight. Okay, and then I will push it down to make the hole and lift it up. Okay, now I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it made the hole. Okay, so now I need to do the same with the second one, but I want the hole in the same exact place. So what I do is I take the first one that I made the hole with and I line it up on top of the second earring. I lay it flat onto the surface and I take my Sharpie, I stick it into the punched hole and I kind of go along in it just barely a little bit just to make a mark so that I know, I'm not sure that you can see that on camera, but just to make a black spot to know where my hole needs to be that so it would match with my first one. You just need a, a spot. Okay, so now I'm going to line up my earring piece. I'm going to hold it in front of me, make sure that it's straight. I know that I've got it exactly where the, where the dot from the marker is. And I'm going to go ahead and punch it. Then I'm going to release it and pull it out. And now, and some, oh, that's something else. Sometimes you may have one of your punches. You have the little punched hole right here on the back. Just pull it off. And sometimes it's just barely hanging on there. You just remove it if it does. Most of the time it's not on there. So anyway, now you have two earrings that are punched in the same exact, well, if I hold it up right, now you have two earrings that are punched in the same exact spot, so you know that they're even, okay? Now, before we add the hardware, 
we'll go ahead and do this one. Now, if you were going to go ahead and add a monogram to this, before you add your hardware, you want to go ahead and add your monogram or your design to this, okay? The faux leather works great with a monogram, but you want to be sure to put your monogram or your design on before you add your hardware, okay? The same aspect of putting your hole in for your faux leather works the same as your glitter canvas. Don't punch your holes too close to the edge up here. A lot of the ripping through is where people are taking their fish hooks and not using a jump ring and just attaching it. And with the fish hook ear wire, if you can tell right here, you do not have a lot of room. So, of course, you've got to put your hole way up here. And then if you're moving it around, moving it around a whole lot, it's going to jerk out. So don't do that. Use a jump ring and eliminate that problem. So, as I said with a glitter canvas, make sure that you're far enough down on your material that you're not too close to the edge to make it rip out if you were to move it. But you're far enough down that when you add a jump ring, it will be just fine. The hole punch, punch is perfect for faux leather as well. This hole is a great placement. Okay, another question that I've had about the earrings is sometimes they will see fraying around the sides. Take a lighter with your faux leather. Lightly, I don't mean stick it to it and let it burn. Lightly go across your faux leather. Now what this is doing is this is sealing the edges of your faux leather. It's not burning it. All it is is sealing it. If you ever work with ribbon, a lot of ribbon or bow makers will cut the ribbon and then they will light it at the end, kind of heat it at the end. It keeps the ribbon from fraying. That is the same thing with this faux leather. If you will just barely heat the edges of it, it will seal the sides. It will keep it from fraying. Do not touch it to it till it burns. Just barely move it around to seal the edges. And that will not be a problem. If you see some of your canvas um, have strings or something, you could do the same as well. And you could just do it as a precaution anyway because it's not going to hurt anything. Just don't stick it all the way to it for long periods of time to burn it or to leave black marks. So that's just a little tip as far as keeping your sides on your faux leather from fraying. Okay? So, now let's go ahead and assemble glitter canvas earrings. Okay, so I'm using the 5x7 oval split rings. Now what I do is I take one of the split rings and I take these two jewelry pliers. You don't need both jewelry pliers. It's just what I do. And I'll open it up. Okay. And I'm going to take one of the earring pieces and I'm going to stick it in. Okay. Just like that. And then I'll take one of the fish hook ear pieces and then I will stick it into the I will stick it on to the split ring then I will take my two pliers together I will close it and another thing I've seen people have trouble with is actually closing the jump rings enough to where there's not a gap in them so what I do is I close them and then I take my pliers and I kind of push them up against each other to kind of close that jump ring a little bit further. Okay. Now, I have my first earring. And what I was talking about, about setting it, 
if I'm holding this earring like I was putting it in, okay, you see where the earring piece goes up? This would be as if I had it in my ear. You see how the earring goes around like this? You can't help that, okay? But if you're holding it, what you can do, you can take it with your split ring and you can turn it holding the split ring and the bottom part of the fish hook and then you can turn it. You see when I turned it, it made it stay straight. So now I'm holding it as if it's in my ear and it's straight. So that's how you would assemble those earrings. Now we will go ahead and assemble this uh, bow leather piece. It is the same, same concept. You can you will open up the jump ring, put it in. I love the oval jump rings because they give more of a space, especially with the teardrops or your angles, like your um, leaf shape or your diamonds. And it just, to me, in my opinion, it gives a really, really pretty look. All right, so we're closing up the jump ring. Okay. You can move your jump ring around to where the open and closed part will be in the back. Okay, so after holding, after holding the jump ring and the bottom of the fish hook earring piece and adjusting, I have fixed the placement of the earring piece so that it will be straight once it's put in your ear. Not hard. These earrings are very easy um, to make and you can make a really good profit um, from these depending on how well they sell in your area. Even if you sold them for 10 or $12, you could well, you know, make your money back and then some uh, for your supplies. Just really think about it if you do decide to sell them and uh, make sure that you know what you sell is is something that you would wear um, I've had a couple of questions about um, what I have to take the take my pictures of my earrings on this literally is just an 8x10 canvas that I covered in Mod Podge and put a piece of scrapbook paper on once it was dry I did not cover the top with Mod Podge at all once it was dried, I just took a couple of pair of earrings and poked them through. Only did two pairs of earrings on here, um, so that, that way I wouldn't have a ton of holes poked through here. Um, when you zoom in with your camera, it makes a really good background, and no one knows it's an eight by ten canvas. Um, that's just you know just a tip if you're looking for something cheap and inexpensive to use for you know a background or something to hang your earrings on um i've also seen people take picture frames and do something similar or add ribbon or use your creativity and come up with something something neat for your product photos there's no right or wrong in this just use your creativity i'd love to see what you make and don't forget that there are two earring cut files in the description box below available in studio 3 file and svg files i just ask that you don't that you do not share or sell the files send your friends or family over to this video and let them download for themselves and we'd love for you to join our crafty chaotic live facebook group i do have a facebook page um, I'm trying to transition into a group page um, just so that we can kind of share crafts and get video tutorial ideas and um, kind of help each other and um, so that I can share cut files with you. Um, just, you know, just a great crafting community that I'm trying to um, establish with everyone. Anyhow, I'd appreciate if you'd give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If it helped you, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Feel free to message me anytime. And I hope that you have a great crafting year, and we will see you next time. Happy crafting!